Hello friends, this video on Improvement in Food Resources Part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see how is crop variety improvement done. Now we understood that why do we need to do this. So now let us see how can we do this. How do we actually improve the variety of a crop. The technique is hybridization. So the, this process is known as hybridization. It is an, a very useful thing and it is a very important term in crop variety improvement. What is hybridization? You would have heard of hybridization in your chemistry also, right? SP2 hybridization, SP3 hybridization, you would have talked about that. So I'm sure you would have heard this term hybridization. Now just see what is hybridization in biology. It is nothing but crossing between genetically dissimilar plants. That means if we have two different plants, we cross the two plants. What do we mean by crossing? That means reproduction between two different plants to produce a third plant. So the plant which is being produced, that will not be exactly similar to plant one. It will neither be exactly similar to plant two. It will have some characteristics of plant one and some characteristics of plant Two. So now by this technique what we can do is whatever characteristics we want in the product. So we can choose the reactants accordingly. Let us suppose this is plant 1 and this is plant 2. So we cross plant 1 and plant 2 to get some plant 3. So now we all would know what do we want in plant 3. Right? Suppose we want that this plant 3 should be of short height and the color of the plant should be green. Right? So what do you do? Let us suppose you have taken one short plant. This is one short plant. Okay? Which is yellow in color. And this is one tall plant which is green in color. Now let us suppose these are the naturally occurring plants. Naturally they, these plants, I mean let us suppose I am talking about a specific plant XYZ. So let's suppose this XYZ comes in two varieties. One is tall and green, other is short and yellow. Now let us suppose but I want a new variety which should be tall or, or which should be short but it should be green. So what do I do? I cross plant 1 with plant 2. So the product which we get, it will have some characteristic of plant 1 and some characteristic of plant 2. So this will be short and green. So by hybridization, what do we do? We actually get some characteristics of one plant, some other characteristics of the other plant. So that is how we can get our desired characteristics, right? Now this hybridization can be intervarietal, interspecific and intergeneric. So what is these in varietal, specific and generic? Now when we look at the taxonomy for uh, any plant, what do we see? that we have like how we have our um, like we, we spoke about the ranks of our body system right we, we said that cells are the basic building blocks cells will form tissues tissues will form organs organs will form organ system organ system will form an organism right we, 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 we have already studied about that uh, ranking so similarly here as far as naming of now, sci or scientific names of plants are concerned, we again have an order. We say that it belongs to which class, whether it belongs to, for every living organism, it is divided into two kingdoms. One is plant, one is animal, yeah, right? So again, under plant, you have sub-kingdoms. Again, under that, you have something. So you have that order. Similarly, in animals, again, you have that order. So when we look at that order or when we look at the taxonomic order in case of plants, we find that there is something called genus. Under that genus, you have something called species. And under the species, you have something called varieties. So this is the order. That means if we have two plants of the same genus, they can be of two different species. Similarly, if we have two plants of the same species, they can have they can be of different varieties. So let us, I, I am sure you are not getting everything very clearly. Let us take one example. Let us take the example of mango. I am sure all of you would have had mango, right? So what is, 
when you go to buy mango you would have seen that there are many varieties of mango available in the market for example you have alfanzo you have himsagar you have dasheri you have bombay green you have langra you have so many different varieties of mangoes available in the market but all of them are mangoes it is not that one is mango and the other one is apple they are all mango but they are all different varieties of mango right so now when you look at the scientific name of mango i mean every object every living organism whether it is a plant or an animal they have a scientific name so when you look at the scientific name of mango it is mangifera i'm sorry it is mangifera mangifera so mangifera is the genus correct so mangifera is the genus so that means all the mango varieties which you see in the market they all belong to the same genus mangifera but they all belong to different varieties now again under this mangifera you can have different species of mango for example one common variety is mangifera indica so that is a specific variety which is most commonly used but other than that the each variety of mango which you see in the market they will have a different scientific name correct so are you understanding the point what i'm trying to say is for example in rice also you have so many varieties but all are rice that means they all belong to the same genus but they maybe some of them belong to some different species or maybe some of them belong to some different varieties now as it belongs to different varieties so it will have some different characteristics so now this hybridization can be intervarietal that means it can happen between two man two different varieties of mango right so if you take one alfanzo mango and one himsagar mango both of them belong to the same genus maybe they belong to the same species but they are two different varieties so hybridization can happen between two different varieties of the same species it can be interspecific it can also happen that you can take two objects of two different species maybe they are of the same genus but they belong to two different species so there also hybridization can happen it can also happen intergeneric that means between two different genus that means let us suppose you take one mango which belongs to the genus mangifera and you take another apple which belongs to a different genus so you can even do hybridization between a mango and an apple clear so that means hybridization can happen at all the three levels it can happen intergeneric between two different genus it can happen interspecific between two different species of the same genus it can happen intervarietal that means two different varieties of the same species and same genus clear okay so that is hybridization so this is how we get our desired crop variety so now you understand what i spoke in the last slide that why do we go for this uh, uh, crop variety improvement because we want so many things we want good yield we want um, better quality we want it should be resistant it should be highly resistant to biotic and abiotic causes it should have lesser maturity duration and this is how we get it we actually use hybridization now depending upon what we want we decide that the crossing is to be done between which plants clear okay so hybridization introduces desired characteristics resulting in genetically modified crops so basically what we are doing we are actually bringing out some modification in the same crop right so let us let us look at some examples of hybridization when you go to the market you would have seen that there are so many varieties of capsicum which is available in the market you have the green colored capsicum you have red colored capsicum you have yellow colored capsicum right so there are so many different varieties you would have often heard these term also that this is hybrid tomato or this is hybrid um, uh, capsicum right so what do we mean by hybrid that means it is it has been formed by a variety which was produced by hybridization so now let us take this example of a capsicum let us suppose you have one capsicum which is green and which is short because you will see that even they come in different sizes some some are short some are very long so let us suppose you have one capsicum which is green and short and you have another capsicum which is red in color and long right now when you 
cause hybridization between these two, this one and two, when the crossing is done between one and two, maybe you get a third variety, which is green and long. Or it is also possible that it is the variety which you get is red and short. Correct? So that means by hybridization, you got something which was not naturally available. Correct? So this is how hybridization helps. So maybe if you think that long uh, capsicums are better, so you cross it accordingly. Similarly, you would have seen so many varieties of citrus fruits which are available in the market. It is not only the lemons and the oranges. Other than that, also you have sweet lime, right? So, and you will see that they all will have different appearance. For example, when you look at, when you see the oranges, so some oranges will be like, uh, which comes only in a particular season. So their looks will be different. But there are some imported oranges. You will see that they will be quite expensive and they will have a very smooth surface. It will be bright orange. It will look very nice. But again, it will have some different properties. Correct? So there are many different varieties of every crop. So what do we do in hybridization? We actually take some of those varieties of crops and we decide what variety, what characteristics we want and then accordingly we cross those varieties. Look at this flower. It is a hybrid lily flower. So normally if you see a normal lily flower, generally how it looks like, it is, it is just a single color flower, right? But here you see it has got some spots, some designs on it because it is a hybrid lily flower. That means maybe the normal lily flower was crossed with some other flower which had these kind of features. Now, as a result of that crossing, this hybrid lily flower was produced. So I hope I have been able to explain you what is hybridization. So hybridization is the main thing which actually helps us in improving the variety of crop. So we are able to generate a new variety of crop which is better, which can give better yield, which can give better quality. So for these hybrid varieties to yield better results, what is needed? It is needed that the good quality seeds are provided to the farmers who are actually involved in agriculture. So now suppose we, we did this crossing and we did hybridization and we developed a better quality of crop but those good quality seeds need to be provided to the farmers and the farmers should use the same quality of the seeds and they should germinate them under the same condition. It should not happen that they used some good quality seeds and again they used some bad quality seeds, mix them together. In that case the yield will not be good. So they should use all seeds of the same quality and they should germinate them under the same condition. It is not that some of them are put air under very hot weather, some of them are not given water properly. So everything should be done in a consistent manner. Right? Again, crop varieties suitable for diverse climatic conditions are good. Obviously, that is going to help because as I mentioned before also, there are certain crops which grow only in rainy season. Again, there are certain crops which grow only during winter season. Now, if we are able to develop crop varieties which can grow in diverse climatic conditions, that means which can grow even in summer season and also in winter season, that is the best. In that case, we can grow crops throughout the year. It, it will not be season dependent, right? So, we, sh we should try to uh, develop crop varieties. We should, by hybridization, we should try to come up with crop varieties which can grow in diverse climatic conditions. Crop varieties tolerant to high soil salinity are good. What do you mean by soil salinity? That means the content of salt in the soil. Now, if the content of soil, uh, content of salt in the soil is very high, that means if the soil salinity is very high, it adversely affects the growth of the plant. Right? Now, if we are able to develop such hybrid varieties which are tolerant to high soil salinity in that case what will happen even if the salt content in the soil is little high the crop will be able to adjust with it right so it, by improving the crop variety what we are trying to do we are trying to actually find out uh, the best variety which can suit to different climatic conditions which can suit to different types of soil and give us the best product right 
so i hope you are clear with crop variety improvement so in crop variety improvement our main focus was to improve the quality of the seeds or to come up with new improved quality of crops so we will now talk about crop production management thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again